Hello, I'm taking on a challenge to beat every playable Nintendo published game. Welcome to the next episode. The next game is Game & Watch Rain Shower. Game & Watch Rain Shower was the seventh game released in the multi-screen series, and like Game & Watch Mario Bros, this one was also oriented horizontally. In a sea of Game & Watch games that have featured licensed characters and already existing characters, we're back with another Game & Watch original. There's not a whole lot to say about this one, but I do feel like we're getting to a point where they started to add a bit more character to their Game & Watch originals. It's not much, but we now have official art of the main character, as we see him fight against a bird trying to mess with his clothesline. Unlike most Game & Watch games up until this point, the game opens up with a brief cutscene. A boy is taking a break from hanging up all his clothes to dry, when suddenly, stormy clouds start to roll in. Your objective in this one is to protect your clothes from the rain. You do this by using the D-pad to move to one of the four clotheslines, and pushing the L-slash-R button to change the position of the clothes. Each section of clothes can only be in one of two possible positions, so each press of the L-slash-R button will alternate it between the two. For whatever reason, the rain only comes down in single large drops, so somehow this method actually works. That being said, I don't know why he doesn't just quickly grab all the clothes and bring them inside at this point. I guess the rain did come in pretty suddenly, but at some point I imagine it would be better to just quickly run and grab them between drops. Anyway, each drop always falls in a consistent pattern, so this one is all about making sure the two rows are lined up for whatever drop is coming down next. The drops do come in at a bit of a weird angle, so it took me a minute to get the hang of the exact way to place everything. Sometimes, I would get confused about which way the clothes would move when I pushed the L slash R button, which wasn't too detrimental, but it sometimes messed up my plans for the future. For example, when this shirt is in this position, pushing the button will move it to the right, but for some reason, in my head, I was thinking it would move to the left. After spending some time with the game though, I realized that each section had built-in outlines that could be used to help you realize where the clothes would move next. Every now and then, typically around just after 100 points, the sky clears out and the main character takes a break. When this happens, you earn a bunch of bonus points. This break doesn't last long though, as the stormy clouds come back soon. Man, what is up with the weather today? Like all the multi-screen games, you earn back your lives at 300 points, so my goal for this one was to get to 300 points in both game modes. I started with game mode A. Honestly, I found this one to be pretty easy. My first run was a breeze. I got to 300 points without losing a single life. Uh, sort of. Somehow, I managed to lose a life the moment I got to 300. This happened immediately afterwards, so I didn't get this new life refreshed, but since I immediately failed, I didn't get to see the double points mode at all. What a bummer. When you lose a life, your character takes coverage and rings out his shirt. After this, he hangs it up again. Okay, now I know this guy's just being dumb. There's no good reason for him to put it back out there in the rain. Anyway, I kept going to see how far I could make it. I made it all the way to 696 points before finally ending my run. At this point, the rain was coming down pretty fast, and I just wasn't able to keep up. Next up was Game Mode B. Remember that bird on the cover of the box? In Game Mode B, they finally decide to join in. In this mode, there are birds on the far edges of each screen, and occasionally they swoop down and change the position of the clotheslines. This added a whole new layer to the game, since you couldn't just assume a clothesline would stay in the correct place anymore. They give you quite a bit of warning before it happens, so you're usually able to tell when they were about to pull it. It can be a bit tough to know whether or not you should fix a clothesline on the other side of the screen or wait for the bird to pull the wire. Eventually, I realized you didn't necessarily have to wait until after the birds pulled the clothesline, as they would just move it back into place if you pulled it early. Since the birds don't actually care about the state of the rain and the clothes, I occasionally found that the birds would help me line everything up in place. Despite this mix-up, I still did pretty good in game mode B. I lost a life pretty early at 95 points, but I got to 300 points pretty smoothly after this. I didn't make it quite as far as game mode A, but I still got to 488 points, losing my last life to a bird tricking me into pulling the clothesline early. With that, Game & Watch Rain Shower was complete. On to the review. Once again, I think the multitasking component of the multi-screen series was handled well in this one, and I like the difference that the birds made in Game Mode B. Generally speaking, I much prefer it when the game modes have some distinctive difference that makes them feel more unique than just a change in difficulty. That being said, the game is a bit slow-paced, so I found this one to be a bit boring at times. I gave the game a 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the next one. Also leave a like if you enjoyed it, since it'll help the channel grow and motivate me to continue this series. I hope I will see you in the next step on my quest to beat every Nintendo game.